All right, everybody, a new video on the hottest topic, which is going right now, which is the electronic waste transfer note. And one thing I want to ask you all, right, if you have got anything to comment about this video, this is the mad thing, right? People send me a text message with things they want to talk about. They text me rather than put a comment on the video. So click subscribe. I mean, our channel gets 70, 80, 100,000 views a month, some months 300,000, and I've got 3,000 subscribers because people are watching the videos are not subscribed. So just do me a favor. It'll take you five seconds. Just click subscribe. And then if you've got a comment to leave out like that, Put, leave it on the video so I can engage with people because I'm getting text messages not so I'm literally stopping having to stop my work to text people back and I, you know you know how it goes sorry anyway right the electronic waste transfer notes so I've read through this thing a, f a few times and it is 15 pages long and obviously as you will know I am not the best of uh, of an academic person give me an hammer I can knock an hammer but not very good with one of these unfortunately but right i'm going to do you a video and i'm going to round up what i've read through and i've been looking at little things over the weekend i'm going to read through it as i'm as i'm speaking to you as well just to refresh my memory so everything's fresh but this is taken from directly from the government so top and bottom of this whole situation the environment agency now want to track the waste from how i'm reading it and bear in mind, I could be a little bit wrong, but I've, I've read it a couple of times. Like I say, I've got to translate it. So when you pick your waste up, I think basically, well, it's on the lorry. There's a there's an electronic waste transfer note that they will have access to from the point of collection. So let's say, for instance, and I'm going to get to why the environment agency want this to be done. I, I, I know why they want it to be done. Well, I think I know. And I'm going to get to that. Just keep, just stay with me for two minutes and, and watch the video, and you, you'll see what this is all about. But reading this document, right? So the first page on it, it says that this has the potential. To, so these are the benefits: the potential to save 23 million pieces of paper per year. Whew. That's impressive, isn't it? That is really impressive. Do you know they could stop even more pieces of paper being used? Stop giving people receipts at the till. They go, they save a hundred trillion trees a year just in this country. But anyway, like I say, we're saving the environment, we're saving some paper. It is free. So this system is going to be free and more accurate as a way of recording your data. I'm reading this straight off their website. I'm going to try and put a picture of this on the video so you can see it as I'm reading through it. So it saves businesses time and money with digital storage and fast retrieval of information that everyone in the waste transfer chain can basically have a look at so that's good isn't it sorry about my reading i'm a bit cr i'm not very, like I said, i'm not very good so don't don't take the mic out of me don't in, in the comments around i'm doing my best um and then gives information on the volume and type of commercial and industrial waste what's being produced and uh let me have a look and basically they made it efficient for users to use so that's very very interesting and probably not the real reason why the environment agency want us to do this. So it says basically that re the recording of um, the movement of non-hazardous waste using a paper system is inefficient. So I'm not I'm not sure if they're going to use a paper system for the hazardous waste, but the non-hazardous um, that is that is what they're going to use. It's going to all be an e-system. So I don't think we will have any choices. So if you've got a waste transfer station or you've got a permit or you've got a waste carrier's license or whatever else, if you've got one of those to comply with it, you are going to have to use this system. So in the first section of this document, like I said, I'm going to put it on the screen, but I don't think you'll be able to read it. It might be a bit small, but... You know, I've skimmed through all this, and basically what they're saying is anybody who basically produces, moves, you know, looks at, you know, walks past, it's going to be an electronic system. You walk past the wheelie bin, you know, and it's get you're getting you're getting uh, it's getting recorded. So basically, it says that cutting through all the shit in here, you know, we're saving paper. You've got to keep them for six years or two years or whatever, and that's efficient. I don't see why I've got a filing cabinet there with six years worth of waste transfer notes. And it, 
what does it matter? But anyway, right, apparently it's inefficient. Uh, and it says there is also scope for inaccuracy. Mm. So different users completing paper records in the waste transfer chain can make mistakes and record the information incorrectly. Right, well, we're never getting to some here, aren't we? We're getting to some. It says on this. Um, it says on this that a quarter of all waste is from commercial uh, businesses and stuff like that. Like I say, I'm just taking information off um, off these documents. I mean, the amount of waste that people make, as as you know, just living, will be way more than industry. I would have thought. You know, just your bin bags and your stuff like that. The Environment Agency. I think what they're looking to do is, um, it says here, to have smarter administration for both businesses, you know, and limit, limiting storage and paper use and stuff like that. Better knowledge, so more accurate data recorded, so they can obviously look at it. And here we get to the, um, at the bottom of the first paragraph, prevent waste crime mm. and improve compliance. And... I think we're getting to the nitty gritty of it now. So reading this, why do they want it? So you always know when it's something secret when they put it at the end. So everything else is, we save 23 million trees and you've got to store your waste transfer so it'll be so much better for you. Blah, 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 blah. Look here, look, but don't look over there, look. You know what I mean? Look at this, look at this pretty thing here, but don't look over here. I'll tell you what this is. This is so, let's say for instance, you go to a customer, you pick some scrap up, I'm using scrap as an instance, you go to somebody's house and they'll say, right, where's that scrap from? And you go, uh, for, oh, God knows. Oh, I've just been picking it up off the street. Well, that won't be legal. So all these people going around collecting scrap, the police will be able to pull up and what they're doing here is they're getting us all digital. It's all digital in it. You know, like your MOT, they went from bits of paper to digital. You used to get a seven day producer. They couldn't take your car. Now you get pulled on the side of the road. And if you haven't got insurance tax MOT, your car's getting took. And I think what you'll find is where this is going is if you get pulled over on the side of the road, for instance, and you haven't completed a waste transfer note, it'll be a fan. Bang, 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 fan every time. Stuff like that. Possibly take your vehicles if it's a smaller one. You know, you you know, boys, exactly where this is going. You know, the other thing, if you're in a, well, if you're in a skip truck and you're driving and you've got a skipper's soil on the back and you write general waste on, on your electric transfer note and it's not, they can pull you up and they'll say, well, there's an 100 quid fan, there's a 200 quid fan, there's misclassification of waste. You know, if you go in with a big Arctic load of summer and it's got the wrong, you know. But the problem is with all this stuff, like I've said to everybody, right, it's all right, you know, putting these rules and regulations and, uh, and everything else. Accidents do happen. People are not experts in, you know, these people who design these rules. You know, some of these books are 500 pages long, 1,000 pages long of all the rules. I mean, how many European waste codes is he? I don't know, 10, I'd say whatever it is, 10,000, 5,000. How is a person, a driver, somebody like me or you, supposed to know every single one of them codes when they go to a job? Let's, you know, and this is the problem. It's not that people make mistakes and, and misclassify things. I think what it is, is I think they put that, what they think suits them best. And I'm not talking, like I always say, I'm not talking about the people that get general waste and put it down as, you know, fucking bricks or whatever, you know, completely taking the pace. I'm not on about that. But this system here, believe me, it opens us all up to massive, massive um, regulation. And me personally, I think it'll be great because, again, like I say all the time, if we had a real level system, everybody would get a similar price, a similar, you know, and and your amount of work you get would be on the back of how good your service was. And all these little transfer stations now, these little, um, these guys running illegal transfer stations, well, you are absolutely, I don't like to do too much swearing, but you've got no chance it, it, it literally the job is over really if you think about it if you've got to log your waste right so if you've got to log your waste from the point of collection 
and you're going to tip it into a little yard somewhere illegally on an exemption, you're not going to be able to do it because when you go to the destination point, which use my site for instance, so your local man picks a skip up, he takes it back to his little yard on an exemption, then he brings it to me, he brings the wood, the brick, of it. it's all, it's all going to be traced backwards and they're going to say, well, how did that mix way skip turn into brick, wood and thing? It's, it's a great, I'll tell you what, I tip me off to the person who does come up with this stuff because it, it will massively, massively stop everybody with uh, running on exemptions because you, well, it will do as long as they do the paperwork, but what's the farm going to be? The farm might be 100 quid for not doing it right, so they'll just, you know what I mean? It, there is that to think about. But talking about what we're going to have to do me and you so i think i think reading through this document is that there's going to be some sort of web portal or something like that or you can build a system or integrates into your own and you will just type out uh, a waste transfer note from a drop down box and all that lot and and put what suits you best i'm sure there's going to be a lot of changes i mean and i presume the other thing is that the government are going to store that information so they've got it live so basically, if you are doing something you shouldn't be, they're gonna have the, the evidence against you that you filled in on their on their server. So boys, go careful what you're doing. Make sure you you know you keep it how it should be. Because, you know, it's like giving them the CCTV of you um doing something you shouldn't do. And then telling them to look after the CCTV on a memory stick in case they need it someday, you know. So you've got to be, you've got to be very uh, on the ball now. Like I say, this is going to cover everybody. If you just go to a job and pick, pick a bit of soil and hardcore, that person's going to have to have a waste transfer note. Then you go somewhere else, they're going to have to have one for that little bit of waste, and that one's going to have a little bit of waste, and that one's got. And then before you know it, it's a mixed waste load, and then that mixed waste load has to go to someone like me, and then it goes on my way bridge, and then we. Oh man, it's going to be. I tell you what, the advantage is you're going to be spending millions and tens of millions on data storage. That is for sure. Because they're saying there's 23 million waste transfer notes produced every year. Well, I can tell you now, there'll be 50 times more than that from the people with the small vans. Half of them don't even know what a waste transfer note no, is. The people coming here, they're tipping here all day long. We ask them for a waste, blah, 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 sorry, waste transfer note, and they always say, oh, we ain't got one. I ain't got one with me. We'll send one. They don't even know what you're talking about half the time. But anyway, so... The top and bottom is reading through more of this document. It says that we can search and um, retrieve records very quickly. We can download a business report. We can track the waste and find its end destination point. So it finished up. So did it go to landfill? Did it go to a power station or wherever else it went? And this is not only from the people who dispose of waste, like me and you, this is also the people who produce waste. So if you're producing waste and you get rid of it dodgy, like, you know, I'm sure a lot of people do if you take it to a council tip or whatever, it's all going to be logged. Because this is, this reading this, it's going to be council tips as well. So this is really, uh, <sighs> this is probably the biggest change in the industry since the, you know, since they brought out a whammy tab probably or, or even a permit back in the old days when my dad used to do skips it was just a piece of paper you got from the council some people i think still have them licenses but you can take any waste do anything with it there's no laws on it or anything like that then they change it to the you know the standard rules permit the proper permit this is this is as as dramatic as that would be reading through this document <clears throat> Reading through this document, they've gone and spoke to a lot of people in the industry and stuff like that. And it says that there was thinking about being out a voluntary system, so you don't have to have an electronic one, but you can if you want. And it said that 40, well, 50%, 50-50, companies wanted it to not wanting it. And they've basically gone with, um, we're going to make it mandatory. I think in terms of, the bigger companies, the legal companies, I think it won't make no difference to us. I mean, in a way, I welcome it. And, you know, but having in mind the companies who I deal with, the smaller people coming in here and stuff like that, they won't like it. And, I, and I'll tell you why, because 
you know where it's leading to is 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 you know eventually they will be like with scrap metal you take scrap metal somewhere you know it'll all be logged and the people who are not paying tax and in national insurance and wages you know like I say it don't bother us not in what not one bit so your companies like you know your normal ones who are all registered for VAT tax you know national insurance like the bigger companies it won't bother us one bit it, you know it shouldn't make a big difference but your small one-man bands where they get a bit of cash and all that sort of stuff this is this is a massive change it'll be just like I say just like the scrap industry where they started getting rid of that and all that and you know over years people have been caught you know not caught that's probably not the word but you know making money not paying tax on it all stuff like that i think this is maybe to clean up the bottom end of the it, it, this is probably aimed at the top end which is your ones doing all your waste cram and then the ones at the bottom who are doing the um small stuff and bring them all into the middle together you know stop the stop the criminals and you know bring up the little ones and make them compliant and make them legal i think like normal transfer stations like because i don't think it'll make a lot of difference but it is definitely the biggest change you'll have, you know, like I say, as once that environment is she come down to your site and see a skip on site, they're gonna ask you where it's going, then they're gonna, you know, go to that site and say, Well, what SAR skip was it? And if it's a different SAR skip and all you know, it's gonna be very, very easy for the environment issue to catch people doing stuff that they're not supposed to be doing. I mean Yeah. I mean really what they're probably gonna do is give you a few chances and then you'll get your waste carriers license took off yet, you know, and that's the job done, innit? That's the job done. Clever way, really. Like I say, I tip me off to the, to the person who's actually come up with this, you know, this, it was always coming, it was always coming. You know, I knew it was. And I, and I don't genuinely believe that they're bringing in all this and spending hundreds of millions of pounds probably, you know, developing a software system and another, you know, 20 million a year to store all that information. They won't do all that with only the incentive of literally saving 23 million pieces of paper. Definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. The computers that are gonna store this data for six years will do more damage than uh, 23 million pieces of paper. That is that is for sure, isn't it? So there's obviously something else behind it, isn't there? You know, how efficient it is and you know how well they can decide where the waste come from where it's going and everything else you know that's probably not what's their main concern the main concern is is, is being able to get you know I, like i say it's probably quite difficult for them to prosecute and i've said in different videos you know to find information when people just won't offer it with this system you know if if, if somebody's making a skip of rubbish somewhere a business gives it to somebody who's illegal they take it, don't register it, it goes into a yard and you know, like I say, you know the drill, don't you? You know the drill. But this is gonna be, you could end up with thousands and thousands of waste transfer notes. Just just one man on a van, if he goes around, you know, on a daily basis picking 30 loads up, you know, it's an easy way also, if it's not disposed of at a correct site at the end of it, so if it doesn't come to somebody who's licensed, the person who produces the waste could also get done. So like I say, it's a clever system. It's very, very vague, vague. There's, you know this full document just says it, it's just gonna save 23 million pieces of paper it's more efficient it'll stop waste crime and uh, make sure people deal with the waste properly and I think that's where I think that's what people are interested in here the government's interested in is uh, building a like a big pile of evidence against you by you you know for you you know so it's just gonna make everybody do it properly I like that so I think, you know, this is aimed at getting, huh, what What do you think? Leave a comment down below, right, what you think. I've got some good footage coming tomorrow. I am on a big job, so I'm going to put some videos on for you to have a look at. But like I say, we're going to do loads more videos on this topic. And uh, I will see you all soon. Bye.